DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. Hello and welcome to the PV Tech Newscast. The top stories this week. The EU is to impose 42.1% anti-dumping duties on Chinese solar glass firms. Solar World signs a deal with Bosch to buy cell and module facilities in Germany. IMEC and Fraunhofer both enjoy efficiency boosts. Trina add 500 megawatts to their manufacturing capacity. And India and Bangladesh sign a cooperative renewables pact. From the 28th of November, the EU is applying a 42.1% anti-dumping duty on Chinese solar glass manufacturers. Companies that cooperated with the EU investigation carried out in the first half of the year will be charged the slightly lower rate of 38.4%, with Hinanyuwa given the lowest rate of 17.1% to reflect its smaller dumping margin. Heihei Group was given a 32.3% levy, and Xinyi Group a 39.3% rate. The EU believes that the duties could allow European manufacturers that ceased production due to price pressure from an influx of low-cost Chinese solar glass to begin again. Bosch has sold its solar cell and module operations in Arnstadt, Germany to SolarWorld, securing around 800 jobs, according to an official statement from the company. While financial details were not disclosed, Bosch said that SolarWorld had drawn up a business plan for the Arnstad plant that provides a long-term future, both for the facility and just over half the current workforce at the location. SolarWorld has been struggling in recent months and is undergoing financial restructuring, but Chief Executive Frank Asbeck said the deal would not affect this process. Bosch announced back in March 2013 that it would exit the solar industry due to its inability to remain competitive due to global overcapacity and unsustainable module price declines. Bosch is also planning to manufacture an automotive product at the Arnstead Industrial Complex, shifting production from a plant in Hat Van, Hungary, saving approximately another 250 jobs. In the first of two efficiency breakthrough stories this week, R&D center IMEC has implemented a laser doping process to its iPerk solar cell that pushes conversion efficiencies to 20.2% while claiming lower processing costs that could result in faster commercial adoption. According to IMEC, a laser doping processing sequence eliminates the need for a furnace firing step to realize the local aluminium back surface field, or BSF. Replacement of the high temperature STE avoids passivation degradation of the rear layer created by atomic layer deposition. The replacement laser doping step is also said to avoid optical degradation of the rear dielectric metal stack that generates higher conversion efficiencies. The new process sequence is said to be extremely simple as the thin ALD acts as passivation layer and doping source at the same time, while laser processing enables in one step the contact patterning and the local BSF formation. In addition, the high fill factor of the cells, up to 80%, indicates an excellent contact quality, according to IMEC. Combined with IMEC's nickel-copper plating sequence for front contact formation, a low-temperature metallization solution for IPERC cells has been developed. Meanwhile, Fraunhofer ISE said it had developed a low-cost rear contact tunnel oxide passivated contact, or TOPCON, N-type solar cell that has achieved a conversion efficiency of 24%. According to Fraunhofer ISE, TopCon provides a passivated contact across the entire rear surface of the cell, while achieving improved surface passivation, reducing resistance losses. The research center noted that a key hurdle in reaching high efficiencies with N-type wafers and cells is the patterning scheme of the rear contact, as the rear side metal contacts are an efficiency limiting factor. The TopCon cell was said to provide a simple rear contact without any patterning required. This will reduce costs and process complexity as only a small fraction of the rear area is contacted. Major Tier 1 PV manufacturer Trina Solar is to take over operations of Tier 2 module manufacturer NESL SolarTech and expand their capacity by 500 megawatts. The deal was struck with Chinese conglomerate Yabang Investment Holding Group, owners of NESL SolarTech. The new joint venture will be called Changzhou Trina Yabang Solar Energy Company Limited. Trina Solar will hold a 51% stake, while the Yabang Group will have a 49% interest. The facility will be managed by Trina Solar. The company said that the total investment by both companies would be approximately 45 million US dollars, a sum that will be used for capital expenditure and working capital requirements. 
Trina Solar, like the majority of Tier 1 rivals in China, are running at almost full capacity as market demand booms in China, Japan and the US. Having recently detailed its module capacity levels after line upgrades and throughput improvements that effectively took annual nameplate capacity from 2.4 gigawatts to 2.8, Trina Solar's module capacity now stands at 3.3 gigawatts, or 900 megawatts higher than they stood mid-2013. Solar cell nameplate capacity increased to 2.6 gigawatts, providing the potential need for 600 megawatts of outsourced cell production in 2014. And finally, India and Bangladesh have announced a cooperative effort on renewable energy as part of continuing work on inter-country relations. The two countries' joint working group, JWG, has pledged to intensify joint renewable energy research, academic collaboration, information exchange, institutional and technical support, according to the Bangladeshi National News Agency. The exchange was hosted by the Bangladesh Ministry of Energy and Resources Division, PowerCell's Director General Mohammed Hossein, and led by India's new and renewable energy ministry advisor, A.K. Dusa. The JWG, established as part of development cooperation in 2010, has already prompted river resource sharing and bilateral trade, economic assistance and technical cooperation in the past. While at Solar Energy Southeast Asia in Bangkok, Thailand this week, PV Tech spoke exclusively to Munawar Mizbah Moin, Managing Director of Rahimafru Solar, for his opinion on these events. India has been a significant uh, a new technology uh, solution uh, in, in solar and also driving down the cost. They have been reasonably good at bring, and we think that both of them will actually help Bangladesh as it rolls out more and more uh, solar, mostly off-grid and maybe some uh, on-grid uh, uh, programs and projects. And that's all for this newscast. Be sure to join us again next Tuesday, and in the meantime you can keep up to date with all the very latest news via our website and our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.